they found $4.5 million with my name on it. Hello, welcome to Agorize. My name is Sean Wilkerson and today I'll be your host. Yes, this is going to be an email scam teardown. We're going to deconstruct and take a look at a spam email. Uh, spam, yeah, it's spam, but it's also a scam. And for some reason, people fall for these things and they click on them and they chase them down and they get all their hopes up. So we're going to take some very simple steps on how to look and find out how easy it is to detect some of these emails. Some are more difficult, but this, this one's quite easy. Here, let's pop it up here. Let's take a look at this. If you look at the Bank of Ghana line, there's a Gmail account. HenryMurphy.h13 at gmail.com. A legitimate bank's not going to use Gmail. They're not going to use live mail. They're not going to use Outlook mail. They're not going to know. They're going to have their own email account. They're not going to be using um, those type of services. I mean, really, do you want to do business with a bank that uses free email? They can't afford their own email servers? That's questionable. Okay, so... As I already said, the spam detector already caught it and said this is probably spam. But if you go to the reply to, if I were to hit reply, it doesn't go to Henry. It goes to info.bog21 at gmail.com, a whole nother email account. Notice none of these are Bank of Ghana. Then we have an additional two undisclosed recipients to me our personal email address, and the date and time this happened. So, let's start deconstructing this. So, Bank of Ghana. Okay, if we're Bank of Ghana, let's do a quick search here. Okay, so let's see how these match up. Bank of Ghana, 1 Thorpe Road, PO Box 2674. Okay, that matches. Akira. Okay, or Accra. Okay, that matches. Phone number 233. Ooh, here's a difference. 30-266174. Completely different phone numbers in case you call them. This is probably directly a line to a spammer or it's a free Gmail phone account or whatever thing that they're using. I doubt it's going to be their cell phone. Some countries it could be. Russia and other countries, there's a few countries, you can go right to their cell phone. There's no laws to keep them from trying to do any of this. That, in some countries, it's like that. So we already have a couple of flags. The phone number is wrong. The address is correct. They have a Twitter account. They have a Facebook account. I guess we can just go to this link. Whoops. So I shall push this back over. Uh, we're looking for email accounts. Let's see if they use Gmail. Well, right there in the bottom of the page, General Choir is BOG secretary at BOG.gov.gh. So we shouldn't see Gmail, we should see BOG.gh. No, BOG.gov.gh for Ghana. So right there in the, the writer's introduction there, we've already found out that probably this isn't cool. So anyway. So that's just the obvious stuff, but here's a, here's a couple of other things. Let's 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 pull the source of this email up. Okay, so we've got the Henry Murphy, my email address, the 
you've already seen it. I'm not exactly trying to hide it. It's not exactly private. Now, my email address is all over the place. At least that one. It shows that the envelope, the wrapper for the email is this Henry Merck, the age 13. It shows that it goes into email. It gives an IP address from the person that sent it. Now we can run this IP address. Let's, let's just out of curiosity take a look at this up. It also shows a port 40435. I typed IP address lookup. We're just gonna go grab one of these. There's plenty of places that do it. We're gonna hit paste. Some of them don't use I, I, IPv6 yet. And so here's one that's even better. Okay, the thing I want you to see here is that IP address is from Europe, Ireland. Google has email servers all over the world. And you usually get connected to the one closest to you, or at least closest to the VPN that you're popping out of or whatever. And even below in the warning, it says, this is likely a mail server, not an individual. Here, let me scroll up. Yeah, we know it's a mail server. It's a Google mail server. But it's right there in the middle of Ireland. If they're gone to West Africa, which is a whole lot of distance away from there, that's probably not a good thing either. So let's go back to our email. So there's a step. We just looked up the IP address. Using TLS 1.2. Okay, that's a intermediate security generation. 1.1 has been um, deprecated. 1.2 is the base thing that we all should be accepting and, and interacting in. And 1.3 is pretty much the standard now. That's what all my stuff defaults 1.3, the fall back to 1.2. So here we go again. Whoops, wrong window. Uh, there we go. It's encrypted, it's been tested because it's Gmail, just like I have my own DCAM signature. That way they can trace it back. So this basically is, uh, authenticates the email as coming from Gmail. It has nothing to do with the user, no different than mine. It authenticates an email leaving my server from my account but anyone in the world that has access to that that email account can send email out and it would still satisfy this dkim signature well that's a whole nother topic we're not going to get into it this is just a back-end way for email um, processing software and servers to understand if a um, email is authenticated if authentic as to who the server that sent it this ties the email back to the domain name so somebody can't come in the middle and hijack and try to send stuff out and saying oh i'm so and so and be sending it out of another mail server nope the, this this is actually registered with your domain name anyway so that's just saying yes this is authentic as far as gmail as coming from gmail uh we'll skip some of this doesn't matter i'm just seeing if there's anything we care about there's that reply to info there's the from line which we know is fake the boundary if you know how email messages are stored does it mean something if i real quick flip to the bottom you'll see that boundary signature is all the way at the bottom there there's your boundary signature all right, so let's go through some of this other stuff. Is it spam? Yes, it scored 3.3. Now, a lot of people will set their uh, server safely to five. Uh, they consider that a nice balance so you don't get so many false positives. I'd rather have an authentic email come to my server and get caught as spam from a legitimate person than an illegitimate email coming from a, a scammer. And so what I've done is I've pulled my, my acceptance level down. 
much lower than five. Scam store is at 33. So I'm using spam assassin and some other stuff on the server. It did a quick preview. It checks this stuff out. And just on its preview, here's what happens. They give it a score of 40 to 60% score, uh, spam. And the score is right in the middle. It's 50. So if you land, if this score lands in between those, you get points. So there's 0 .8, uh, 0.8 points. You get 0 points for this dear beneficiary heading. But 0 0.2 points were because they mentioned a million or a hundred thousand. So there we go. Then they got 0 0.9 points because they're talking about a million in US dollars. And here's what I was talking about earlier briefly that you're banquet me using a free email account. Well, right here. Notice there's no points associated with this. Now I can turn that on. But free mail from sender email is commonly abused in end user mail provider. Free mail, uh, because the end, the email user ended in a digit because these guys will set up like Henry Murphy dot H1, H2, H3, right on up to H100. They'll set up a bunch of email accounts all at once. Um, that way that they can kind of keep track of who's dealing with what when you're, when you're responding. And also, if Henry.h13 has served a subpoena, or Google served a subpoena for that, that doesn't mess with the 14, 15, and all the others. They can keep going until they get busted across all of them. So, another half a point between those. SPFF is another. Um, security mechanism that's associated with email accounts, it passed. So it ended up with nothing. I have SPF, SPF also. HL message, that used to be a big no-no. Now it's kind of whatever. I still don't accept emails in HTML. There's a whole reason for that. And I'm sure we'll find some emails to look at to show why. There again, a negative 0.1. So now we're getting good points back because they have a valid DCAM. Um, or DKIM, or how you say it, I'm not even sure. Another point back and another point back. Because it says it's from the author's domain. Now, if it's a free Gmail account or something, I think this should be turned off. I don't think you should get points back. But anyway, so they've managed to get one to point three points back just from gmail's default security setup but anyway so money free mail rep uh, reply to lots of money from someone using free email yes so they lost a point or should i say they gained a point free mail reply to there's another Reply to which we saw info, whatever. And the advanced fee, you don't see that too much anymore. They they don't hit you with the advanced fee request until after you respond to them. Give us fifteen hundred dollars to process. Well, basically they're taking your fifteen hundred dollars and you'll never hear from them again. It's free money for them and you're out fifteen hundred. And that was I hope you learned your lesson then. When we look at the email, uh, we didn't even go that far. We didn't go for all the, the source code and look at the view message source or anything. And we were immediately able to come up and find the phone numbers wrong. Email addresses are wrong. It was kind of that simple. In fact, I didn't need to open this up. If this is Bank of Gotham and I just looked at that Gmail, I immediately know, okay, this is crazy. But the, uh, I guess you call the 800 pound gorilla in the room is this. I have dealt with uh, international clients. I have dealt with clients in um, uh, Korea uh, and China. And they have very specific ways. Any, any major corporation are, is going to have a very specific established way to deal with these type of transactions. 
vast majority of you are not going to have any kind of relationships with any kind of international corporation to have this much money sitting around in your name. That's the easiest thing to think about. You don't even have a reason for this. But I might have a relative. If you do, the relative's got an attorney. The attorney's trying to execute this. And to do so, they're going to contact you through a probably a legal processing system. And they'll be knocking on your door and saying, here's a certified letter. And even those need to be validated and checked. Turnaway, this was a simple email that was sent to me about a week ago. I don't know, 18th, something like that. Yeah, 18th, so it's a little over a week ago. Now, I've been storing these off for, for quite a while. I have a lot of these. I've got PayPal. I've got a bunch of them that we're going to take a look at. So anyway, this is how this, this, this video presents multiple tiers of expertise on how to look some of this up. We looked just at the email real quick, ran a fast uh, search engine search. I use DuckDuckGo, so it's DuckDuckGo search, not a Google search, but you can use Google. I don't, and I wouldn't, and I don't suggest it. Um, we quickly found out multiple problems with this, but we also saw there were some similarities with the truth. I didn't even look up the person's name. I didn't even see if there is a Dr. Ernest Addison. And even if there was, we already know we're not dealing with Dr. Ernest Addison because we're dealing with a Henry Morf Murphy and we're dealing with an info.bog. So I don't think um, a doctor, anybody is going to be going by Henry Murphy dot h13 at gmail or an info bog 21 at gmail by the time you've got that title you've established you've probably got a legit email someplace so hope you found this educational hope i showed you something new uh, oh, yeah, we also went in and I showed you how to grab the IP address and do some quick background check. Find out this is actually from Ireland and not even Africa. That's a whole continent apart. Europe, you know. So if you found this helpful or beneficial whatsoever, click the like button. If you haven't, please subscribe. Uh, support us on our Patreon. We've got uh, direct donation links. And we've got some more videos coming up. I, I can do some more of these if you would like. Or we can get in some other ones. Send me some suggestions in the comments which you'd like to see us go over. Until the next video.